Welcome to the Teacher's Toolkit for Literacy, the free podcast for motivated teachers and school leaders who want to inspire their students and school community in literacy learning. Make sure you subscribe to the show on your favourite podcast player, and for more amazing literacy resources, check out the show notes provided with every episode. Hi, I'm Sharon, and I'm the host of a Teacher's Toolkit for Literacy. In every Toolkit episode, we bring you specific resources, tools, strategies, tips and techniques to help you in your job as a teacher of literacy. Firstly, we acknowledge and pay our respects to the Ghana people, the traditional custodians whose ancestral lands we gather on. We acknowledge the deep feelings of attachment and relationship of the Ghana people to country, and we respect and value their past, present and ongoing connection to the land and cultural beliefs. Welcome newcomers to the Facebook group and podcasts. We love hearing the diverse reasons why teachers across the world are joining, hearing all of this deep and creative literacy work going on in schools. A couple of recent comments for those who've joined on the Facebook group. Thank you for adding me. I'm head of English in a large regional middle school in Western Australia. Literacy levels are very low and I'm constantly looking for effective teaching strategies PD ideas to help our kids improve their basic literacy levels. And from another, Hi, I've been a primary teacher for over 35 years and still find I need to keep challenging myself to improve and learn about the many facets of teaching. I travel on the train for 50 minutes each way and find listening to these amazing and insightful podcasts great. I'm often scrounging around in my bag to find something on which to write that little pearl of wisdom and knowledge found in these podcasts. So many things ring true to me as an experienced teacher and help me to better articulate my opinions on many topics. I'm fortunate to teach at a wonderful school that is always looking to do better. And if you're not a member of the Teacher's Toolkit Facebook group, we'd love you to join and introduce yourself to the group too. And welcome to this podcast called Quick Writes Using Mentor Texts and welcome to our co-host Phil. Thank you Sharon. Oh that was quite a long little you know I was well I was really um, maybe I had your mum in my ears you know trying to articulate that clearly Mm. (laughs) and you know use pausing for effect but maybe I dragged it out a little bit too much Mm. but anyway. She used to say enunciate your words Phil. Yes. Mm. Enunciate <laughs> Actually, your words. Actually, I think it was probably Philip yeah, it <laughs> that was. she would have yeah. said as well. Yes. Yeah. I love that. Uh, well, I love both those comments, but the one on the listening on the train and mm. getting those pearls of wisdom. So mm. I'm glad it's having some positive effects. Yes. Yeah. Yes, indeed. And and I love that, um, you know, over time on the, fa- on the Teachers Toolkit Facebook group, how many people have introduced themselves. And I love the connection that then is made, um, you know, amongst people that are on the group. But I think the really important part about it, like we're not expecting people to be um, engaging with the Facebook group by writing lots of comments or, um, Mm. you know, like I know how time poor and, and that's true. We are all, you know, we are busy. We are busy. And so, you know, we're not trying to make um, the Facebook group another layer of, you know, where it has to be, where you have to interact in that way. I love that both of these people are really talking about from the podcast getting exactly what they need from it. Mm. And so in that way, you know, we hope. You know, by being able to listen to those things for many people, <laughs> I just love all of the the times people are listening. Whether they're walking, whether they're you know someone I know who does it whilst they're vacuuming, mm-hmm. um, you know whether I'm on the train, whether I'm in the car, and actually as we were preparing for today, I was already thinking about um, for those who will be driving during this podcast, there may be times again where. What I'm going to be getting you to kind of think about, you might be thinking, oh, I just want to write that down. And, of course, we can't have you doing that whilst you're driving. So so I know the power of podcasts. We both find the podcast that we listen to so useful because we can be doing that in, um, you know, in times when we may be doing something else as well, but where we can actually give some attention 
to the thinking about those things, even if it's while we're doing another job. Fantastic. And the topic for today, Sharon, what's the struggle with writing? All right, so brought two ideas together here, quick writes using mentor texts, so two pieces as tools because they are both tools um, for us to, for when we're thinking about like how do we motivate our writers? How do we really get our writers motivated? How do we elevate students' writing? How do we get them having a go at things? How do we engage them? How can we differentiate in ways that are you know that you know what are these things that we can do with all of a class and there still be entry points and no ceiling for we're our keep, students we're keeping the class together yes um, yeah which is vital isn't it one of our timeless T's yes yep. not that we're saying they have to be together for every no in fact we're no. not saying together for the whole lesson no, no. I think. That that's actually that was a um, someone asked me about that just recently mm. when I was in a school. They said, "Do you you don't mean like keep them together the whole lesson?" And I mm. said, "Absolutely not." No. But the together, when like that's about the community building. Yeah, you know, if we're together, that means we're all being able to share and have as a focus the same things. Not well. You're a striver, so you can only be thinking about this. Or you're a Mm. thriver, so you get to do this. You know, we want every, we want our tasks and our our teaching to allow, because we know so much about our learners, for them to be able to go. Yep, I can see how I can get into this and go with no limit to this. You know, we want every child being able to sit there and mm. and see how they fit into what we're bringing to them. Mm. Um, so some differentiation and thinking about how we provide good models for um, the things that we uh, – especially models for them as writers. Um, and really one of the big things that will come out about that again is that if we're talking about writing – as you know, we've said here, quick writes using mentor texts, that we really where we can, we're thinking about literacy as a whole, not at all being compartmentalised. So when we're talking about writing and using mentor texts, then we're talking about being a reader, about a writer, about a language user, about being a creator. We're, we're able to see ourselves in full, multiple ways, not just this is me as this and this is me as that. And I think, you know, that's, we've already talked about being time poor as teachers. You know, how can we bring things together so that we can make those things, those experiences meaningful and being able to, you know, have tasks that are allowing students to use both their knowledge as readers and writers in this and thinkers. So, quick writes. Using mentor texts. I'm going to talk a little bit to start us off then about um, a possible routine that we can use that brings both of those things together. But I will, in just a brief little summary, you know, talk a little bit about what is a quick write and what do we mean by mentor text. Because to bring those two together, I need people... I want people to be able to understand what I'm saying, what I'm meaning by both of those things. And just to, to add, there is a podcast on quick writes, so people can yes. go back to that one. Yes, yep. thank you. Um, we haven't done one on mentor texts. No, uh, well, don't know that we have. Not specifically. No, no. Mm. no. I know we've talked about them, mm. but here mm. we are bringing these two pieces together. So quick writes. Quick writes are a tool that pretty much every writer uses good writers use quick writes quick writing as a tool to help them get their ideas down and get their thinking down without overthinking 
Because once we start overthinking, we get stuck. We second guess ourselves. Is that what I want to say? Is that right? Um, I don't. I don't know if that's a good enough idea. I'm not sure about this. And then we have this whole narrative running through our head of all the reasons why we can't get something down. So we roadblock ourselves. So quick rights are really the release of saying, do you know what, back ourselves, just back myself. With no element of risk here, you know, of making big mistakes and so in a short amount of time and in an in an uninterrupted amount of time and uninterrupted even from our own narrative running in our head just to get those ideas down, to trust ourselves because it's an experiment. What we're getting down here is an experiment and the term quick not only means that it might be a short amount of time that I'm working on this but it means I've got that short amount of time that I can actually have some breathing space then to look back at what I've done and to even have a bit of a think there, what's working well here now? So to reflect a bit on how I'm going as the writing. Oh, this is going going quite well or, okay, this is going well, Mm, I'd change this bit or, wow, this this is not going where I wanted it to go but now I know where I want it to go. So there is a bit more of that opportunity to spiral through writing processes, for want of a better word, rather than what can sometimes happen for our writers and what gets us overwhelmed at times by thinking, right, I'm going to have to write this whole piece. I'm, I'm, you know, like I'm already stuck. Like this is how long does it have to be? How am I starting this? How am I, um, how am I developing this? How am I organising this? And so the quick writes tend to allow us to focus on particular things. And so if you've listened to the Six Plus Traits of Writing podcast, that one will have talked about the kinds of trait or the traits that good writers use and so our quick writes can connect with that so if I just review those what the six plus traits of writing are number one ideas number two organization number three voice number four word choice number five sentence fluency number six conventions Number seven, presentation. And so we may, and and that'll come up again when we think about mentor texts in a moment too. Because as writers, we want to be trying things from all, we want to be trying things from all of those traits of a writer, from all of those areas. And so in a quick write, we may be focusing on one of those things or on a few of those things, and it's an experiment. We're having a try. And if we're doing that in a little separate book or in a writer's notebook or a writer's journal or whatever, we can actually then give it a title. We can give it a label to say, this is what we were trying to do as a writer. It might have been an ideas piece. It might have been an organisational piece. It might have been about voice or word choice. So it becomes part of our toolkit as a writer. Quick writes, giving us the opportunity to experiment and have some goes at that, give it a try. And now flipping to the mentor text, by combining quick writes with mentor texts, we can be using, we can be selecting, choosing mentor texts and what a mentor text or what defines a mentor text. A mentor text, here's a few kind of like definitions of it, but my favourite is that a mentor text is a text that we read with a writer's eye. So we're reading like a writer. We're reading it to understand and to think about and to notice 
what the writer is doing in this piece. And we may bring a mental text for us to think about, so those six plus traits of writing, we might focus in on using that writer's uh, mental text with any one of those traits. So how was the writer um, getting their ideas? Or not just getting their ideas, but organising those ideas. How was the writer organising it to give us, you know, to really lead us in to the text? And how did they give us a satisfying ending? Or we might look at voice or choice or uh, word choice or any of those things. So a mental text, a text that we can read with a writer's eye. Or text, we might, if we want to be a little bit more scientific, we can say texts um, that demonstrate qualities of effective writers. But texts, mental texts really are texts that help us to see or help us to know that the author is in charge of connecting with the reader. So that's that's the author's purpose, job with the it's about connecting with the reader. And so if we can use mental text and quick write together to help our students do lots of experimenting with how they are using their writing or how they are looking at text to find out how did this writer help connect with us as the reader and for us to have a try of that in our in our quick write. And you're going to give a bit of an example today. Yes, I am. That was just getting there. <laughs> mm. um, so the routine... I need to talk a little bit about a possible routine though. So how might that look? How can I I do that? So to begin with, I want to have a text. So I want to choose a mental text for a particular reason. And today I am going to talk us through... Um, the process with a mental text but I have just chosen that mental text because I thought it would be I've chosen two that we're just going to have a little um, go at this routine with them and both of them I've chosen because I've thought many of you well none of you can see it see the mental text unless of course you have um, stopped this podcast gone to the show notes and found the mental text that I'm about to work with because um, these will be the part the part of a um, resource on Teachific called Quick Writes Using Mental Texts, and it's just like a little introductory pack. Um, so if you're sitting with it, but most of you are not going to be sitting with it, so I've chosen texts that I think I can use as read-alouds and for you to hold that information to be able to understand the process. But the the text that I would bring to students, you know, I will usually have a a reason um, for bringing that kind of text. But having said that, the ones in this pack, I think there's about seven in there, I think I've put those together as a pack because I think for a huge age range of students, if I wanted to just try out using quick writes with mentor texts, that these would be some mentor texts that you could immediately use with a huge age range across a big age range of students. So that's that would be, that's my intention, that's my, um, why I've chosen what I've chosen. Um, Hmm, where was I going? This routine. The routine. Okay, yeah. so first thing I'm doing would be choosing um, choosing the, the text. And then within that... Could that just be a, a text that you've been using in the classroom um, and you don't specifically choose it for, you know, just it's a book that you've been reading as a class? 
it uh, depends on my purpose. Yep. So yes, it absolutely could be a book that you've, you know, that you have, it might be a read aloud that you've got on the go. It might be actually um, something that you've, it might be a picture book or it might be a big book or it might be some text, um, you know, in a content area that you've actually read before and mm. now we're revisiting it to look at it with a writer's eye. Yep. Because so, often it's good to have a book that they've already heard. Uh, uh, dep- it just depends. Right. Yep. Depends on the – in this instance, if I'm using it as a quick – you know, with quick write, um, yeah, that's a good – you're absolutely right, Phil, because you'll hear me saying that often, that it's um, – if I'm – because there's two parts here. Mm. If I'm reading – to read it with a writer's eye means I'm doing the reading part. This little – and then the quick write is giving it a try. So in this process, and you'll see this in the notes that come with a mentor text, you'll see me write about it and divide it up in this way. So this really is kind of the routine to it. So, you know, I, I share the, I bring the mentor text or, you know, have the mentor text visible to students. And in this pack that I've got for uh, that's available on Teachific, they are all the mentor texts are all in here. So by that, I'm saying I have provided on a um, sheet the text. So it's typed up. They're pr- nearly all poems in this instance in here and so they're typed up and so they can be put up onto um, a white, you know, onto an interactive whiteboard so that everybody can see the text or enlarged, you know, and as a A3 size sheet because... Whilst you as listeners can't see the text, that is one of the important things for a mentor text for our students, that they can see it. Because, what did I say a mentor text was? A mentor text is a text that we read with a writer's eye. So, I can't do this podcast as a video, so I'm really just trying to talk through the processes So what you are talking about though, Phil, is that there would be times where in a reader's workshop I would be reading the text with a writer's eye and then in the writer's workshop, you know, we might be doing the writing, you know, that extends from that or I'm revisiting a text that we have looked at before. But here I'm combining everything into one. So think of this as like this could be a lesson, you know, a, a singular lesson. This could be a um, – it, It's whilst it's got structure of Readers and Writers Workshop, it's also possible that I could do this. So I bring the text to the students and number one says – you know, in large text, <laughs> display the text so all students can see. Number two, read aloud. So read the poem or read the text aloud with fluency as students follow the text. Number three, notice. So have students look back at the text and tell you what they notice about what the writer has done. We might focus that and say, notice what the writer has done to um, to organise, you know, to organise the text. Notice what the writer has done to create voice. Notice what the writer has done with word choice or sentence fluency 
or notice what the writer, but nine times out of ten, I tend to notice what the writer has done. And if I've brought all of those six plus traits, those behaviours to students, they are already firing in then with what they're noticing about those things. But I can, I can guide that. Even if I haven't brought the six plus traits to students, I find we no, we really don't have to. If we just had the question or the the invitation to look at this text and tell what they what you notice about what the writer has done, we're up and away. But in the notes here, I will have said things we might prompt with six plus traits or we might prompt with can you see patterns or word choices or line breaks or punctuation or ideas or repetitions. What do you notice? And then we chart those noticings. So as we chart them, we are now getting a whole lot of writer techniques being listed here. We're using that mental text to... A- to anchor, excuse me, to anchor mm. some of the the techniques that the author has used here mm, by noticing and uh, listing. Yes, yep. and so there are times where I would also be saying, so we're saying notice, and I might say name. So notice and name. Can you notice? You know, what do you notice? Can you name that? And they might say, ah, oh, see, repetition, you know, a line has been repeated. Or, um, ah, oh, I see alliteration. And the and class here. can help with that naming if the child's getting stuck on it. Yes, mm. yes. Or I can, as mm. teachers, say, ah, oh, that's called, and someone might say what it is, and if no one knows, then I can give a name to it. What I was talking about before is if I name first. So I might say, let's notice how this author has used repetition or how they've used um, metaphor or how they've used... So I'm naming things and getting them to notice those particular things. That's the other way around. And that's the other way around. Mm. So I can name what we're looking for or I can get them to notice first and draw out from it all the things they are noticing and putting names to those things. Because I don't want to always direct that specifically. Unless I want to bring a new something to them that I've that I've noticed they haven't been noticing about text and that, that I'm noticing they're not using in their own writing for effect. So we would then chart those. And this is sounding like this is taking a long time because I'm doing a lot of talking about it. but it, And that's always the trap. You know, I can get into that maxi mm. lot of talking, but it's really about this is every child is in. Every child has the opportunity to talk about and share what they notice and that we just quickly anchor those on a chart and... It might not be a new chart every time we do this. It might be adding on to charts that we've made so that what are some of... We might just tick off some of the things that we have noticed in some other writing or we might put tally marks next to it and say, oh, yeah, here, yep, they did that, they did that. But then we might find new things that we've noticed. So much better for students to be doing the noticing because what we're actually trying to teach them to do is to not just notice with the thing with the text that we bring to them but to notice in their own reading what the author what the writer has been doing very important yeah Mm. and that's the connection to the australian curriculum for, um, in, uh, um, it's in the 8.4 version and it's in the 9.0 version that um, in 2023, well, it's already in 2022, it's already up on the ACARA website. But in there, 
it talks about that students read a wide range of texts, including texts that they use as models for their own writing. And so using mentor texts means, and and this kind of little process is one way of getting our students learning how to use mentor texts or models, use texts as models for their own writing. And the huge advantage is that you're doing it within a short period of time. It's not like they're going away to their long piece of writing that they're working on and then they have to try and do this. They're actually doing it in a very short piece of writing. All right. Well, we haven't got there yet because mm. all we're doing at the moment is reading oh, yep. in okay. these first. So one, mm. two, three, we've, we've enlarged the text, we've read it and we're noticing. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm attaching this to quick writes. So number four is now students have a go at what, what they've noticed in this text. So when I say, you know, all the things that they notice, the text that I'm bringing to them, I'm not bringing something so big that there's 7,469 things to notice (laughs) about this. We're bringing it because it's small enough or short enough for students to be able to notice a number of key things. Now, I use a quick write, I intentionally use a quick write if I've been noticing students haven't been using a particular thing in their writing and then the quick write lets them have a go at it and have a go at it maybe once or twice or three times, and I'll talk through that in the moment, so that after doing this in quick write and having those experiments with it, they can go to their bigger piece that they're working on and find where can they put this? Where can they use this new learning this new, what I've just given a go, where can I use that in my writing in that revision type process? So I can go to a piece of writing that I've done and go, ah, do you know what? Right here, I could use this tech, this is, you know, a technique that the that the um, author of this text has used. Here's a place in my writing where I could use that to great effect. Because you've learned it in the quick write. Yeah. Um, it, it would all say so your I, I suppose this varies. Would you have um, the same thing we're all looking at with that quick write um, with the whole class or just the group? Or yeah, you know, I, I suppose it could vary, couldn't it? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because it's a tool. It's yeah. a tool and a routine mm. um, that we can use. So it could be a group. Mm. But it can also... Um, it can be the whole class because yeah. they're all coming at their own levels, aren't they? Yes, yep. yes. And I think there's an important thing to say about that too in that in our classes, so whichever curriculum you're working from, there are, there are experiences that we are to bring to our students at every year level. And so, say... You know, at a year level, they're, you know, it's talking about particular literary devices that writers are using. I need to bring that to all of my students at that year level, no matter where they are in their, um, you know, in their writing development. They have the right to have that brought to them as, as a, um, as a device that they could be incorporating into their writing. And so in that way, so let's say a literary a literary device, like let's say using simile, my quick write or the text that I bring could be one that's rich in simile and 
there is one in the pack and I'm thinking of the um, the book Deep in a Rainforest, The World Can Be, as red as a parrot, as orange as fungus, as yellow as a flower, as green as a tree snake, as blue as a butterfly, as dark as a shadow, as black as a storm, as bright as a rainbow. Now that is a full piece One sentence, full of simile, and we can see how they work. And we can actually use, like that is one, that's one poem, that's one piece that begins deep in a rainforest and takes us through a rainbow-coloured world, as red as a parrot, as orange as fungus, as yellow, green, blue, and then as dark as a shadow and black as a storm because we need the shadow and the storm to be able to get us to the bright as a rainbow. So, you know, it's got a whole satisfying... So that is a quick write. I'm... Immediately, not all students can necessarily name what's what that literary device is, that simile, but they can notice it and then we can name it. We can say this is what it is. So we might bring, it is important to bring and we can through mentor texts find examples of literary devices or examples of voice or examples of um, how an author has, well, word choice has a lot to do with literary devices um, and the vocabulary we bring. So so what I'm saying is um, there are some, we do want to bring some whole class um, writing techniques to our students through mentor texts. I th- is that what you were asking? Yes, I was, think it yeah. was. And also yeah. it, um, the quick write is a great way to do that. Yes, yeah. So it's really letting us get that quick practice of it. Yeah, that's what it is, quick practice. Yeah. Not having to go to your longer piece of writing. Um, well, not you, immediately, no. but I have but I have done that mm. where I've done the, um, the name and the notice and then we've – gone straight into our big piece and say, okay, yeah, especially where can I mm. do that? But I, I have done it, but to do a little quick write before doing that, mm. if it's needed, I'm absolutely going to do it. And I'm, I'm usually doing that because I'm thinking, do you know what, we haven't, we haven't had a go at this. When have we experimented with this? It's not happening in your writing, so chances are you've not had an experiment with it. And I think there was a key word that you used that they could, or we said, oh, they could have a practice with it. Practice, I think that's a good word, but experiment is even better. Yep. yep. So that we get a chance to, like, when do writers get to experiment? And share that experimenting with each other as well. Share it and reflect on it for themselves mm. to say, mm. okay, in my quick write, what was I trying to do here and how effective did I feel mm. I was with it? Yeah, I find that sharing is really powerful. Oh, so powerful. Mm. Sharing it and reflecting on it and letting in the share, we're all hearing about, you know, so Phil, you, you're you saying, well, this is what I was trying to do as a writer and then oh my goodness, that'll give, that gives me another example of it or another way to think about something I haven't thought yet. Or So being able to share the experiments, I think just really validates every writer in the room and puts writing as, you know, it's a real exploration, like really exciting. You know, I'm trying things out. And and that share, the way one of the ways I've found, you know, to really encourage that share is to get students to think about. So I open it up. So after we do a little experiment, maybe we've had two minutes to write. Let's give it let's have a try. 
do a quick write. And then what are we doing after that? In the share, I'll open it up. Look through, have a reread what you've written. And the first thing I'll, I'll usually get them to do is so underline or find a word or a phrase or and and choose something like what were you trying to do here and and share something here that worked or that you think is ah oh, yeah this 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 worked i tried this you might want to share something that didn't work and tell us this is what i was trying and this is what i've discovered you know, it didn't work quite the way I want, but the next quick write we do in a couple of minutes, I'm going to try this now. So that it really lets us, this builds the revision part of writing that is, I think, the hardest part. But it makes it exciting. It makes it because I, I did, make, find, yeah. you know, I found that revision part when they were doing their longer pieces of writing the hardest thing. They, a lot of them just didn't want to revise. Yeah, mm. and so the important thing here is that they get to, they get to notice in their own writing what they were trying to do and how well it worked. The following quick write that we do. I open that up where we might try something, we might, you know, they might try different topic and um, try the same sorts of things, but they're getting another go at it. Or they might be looking at what they did do and improve that so that it's not always about, you know, or, you know, it's experimenting with lots of those different elements of writing. So in that way, it gives them the opportunity to really anchor for themselves and really understand what it, what it is that they are and ha- what they're trying to do as writer, how effective they are. And so on the, the quick write page that they work on, and a lot of people know that we'll have to post a photo of... Um, for quick writes, I often give students an A5 exercise lined exercise book that has been cut into half so um, horizontally so that we've got just half an a5 size text you know piece uh, piece that they're working with all right so what i'll do next is just talk through the entire process i know i've gone through the whole process but now i'll just talk through a couple of texts and even though people haven't got them in front of them, they're short and the part that I'm really sort of interested in looking at is what kinds of noticings we might come up with with these. So the first one is, um, and these are all in that uh, sample pack that I said I'd given and it's always set out in the same way. So I've sort of got some notes for you. You know I'm not writing scripts for people but I am under the categories of these processes just giving you like the structure of the routine. So first of all what's the mentor text in this instance? It's actually a list poem and it's called Circles. So I'm just going to read you this list poem called Circles. For my students, I would have this visible for them. It'd be enlarged and they would be able to see this. But I'm just going to read it. Circles. A soap bubble. The outer rim of Joan's teacup. The letter O. Your left nostril. Your right nostril. The eye of a possum. A blueberry. A hula hoop. A moon shell. So that's the mentor text. That's it. So I've introduced or I might introduce this piece something like this. Here's a form of list poetry and list poetry 
really helps writers sort of untie their minds. So I can be given a word like circles and I can be thinking of all of these things. Just create a list of things that relate to that word prompt. So we might dream up words and phrases to widen the definition of anything. So in this one it was a circle so we could do other shapes. We could start off with and we might give students, we might use this as a the mentor text and then get them, we might get them to think about, okay, now that we've looked here what the author's, the writer's done, we might give them the prompt of a square to write about. Um, or it might be a fruit or it might be a place or it might be a... So then we can start thinking about, this is sort of like the ideas part. What kinds of things could it be about? So, number one, I've enlarged the text. Number two, I read it aloud to them. Number three, students look at this poem and tell what they notice about what the writer has done. Chart the noticings and on each of these, I've just given some examples. So on this one, I said, every line is a new definition or a new example of that in this instance, circle. Um, the first letter of the line is always capitalised. Some of the examples given are very literal and some are more unique. And then I think the writer has been quite humorous in telling us that circles your left nostril and then underneath that, they've got your right nostril. <laughs> so it's your, sorry, your left nostril, my right nostril. So I think that's the author having a bit of fun there. All right, so once they've noticed and we've charted up all of those things, then I let students have a go. As I said before, what, what are they going to have a go with? Do we do circles again? Sure, I could put circles up. Let's have a quick ride on that. Or let's go another shape. Or let's say um, something that we've been, you know, something that's in the room that we can be inspired by or a topic of something that we're doing. It, you will know what it is that we would get them to try out. And then they would have a share and then we can repeat that process again, maybe with another topic or maybe improving the one that I did or adding to it. Students will often say, can I just keep going with the one that I've started? So there's no right, wrong. It's like, what? how is it going to help them as a writer? And in that instance, what is it that, you know, you're going to get them to do next? So that's an example for one that's called Circles. This is another list poem and this one actually comes or is inspired by a book that I happen to have called 14,000 Things to be Happy About by Barbara Ann Kipfer. And so this is just a little excerpt from that book. Um, and so it's list poetry again and I've just called... oh. That's what I wanted to say before I finished off the last one is that in there, when they're writing, um, you know, on that page, they could put some key words at the top of the page um, after, you know, maybe some of the key words, you know, that were up on the chart. So some of the techniques that they might have been using in this because then that gives them a little anchor for what it was they were trying to do as a writer here. So if it was me as a writer trying to do, you know, with the circles poem that I was trying to have, you know, all these descriptions, you know, one line after another um, and making a list poem. So it might be list poem um, describing something. Um, so then I've got it as a tool, my little quick write book is a tool for me to come back to the way it's set out, you know, it's not written 
you know, have I written it as a list or did I write it as one big long, you know, just across the lines? Um, all of these things that we can talk about. All right, next one. This was the 14,000 things to be happy about. So, first of all, number one, enlarge the text, display it so all students can see it. Number two, read aloud the list with fluency as students follow the text. Number three, have students look at the list and tell you what they notice about what the writer has done. Now, let me read you the list that I've got here so that you can have a think about what has the writer done, even though you can't see the text. So 14,000 things to be happy about. Warming milk for hot chocolate. A rumbunctious rooster. The rattle of an old truck. Orange skies. Standing up straighter. Picnicking by the lake. Explosion of fireworks. Wind ruffles. Standing up for myself. Secret mazes. Bright yellow yolks. Now there's more on the list and in fact there are 13,000... 990 more than that <laughs> um, in the book, not on this list. So what did we notice? You know, that every line or idea is a complete thought. So they're not following on from each other. They're just, each line is just one Their own thought. thought. Mm. One thing to be happy about. Um, this poem wasn't written in a day. This is 14,000 things. So it wasn't written in a day. So that means that the writer has been adding to it day after day, week after week, and I know year after year. So they might be some of the noticings. Number four, have a, qu have a go quick write. Number five, share. Number six, we can repeat, have a go and share those. So that's the routine that is a possible routine. I'm not saying it's the only one, but it's one that I've used over and over and over again. So I'm just bringing that one to you as a possible routine for using quick writes or mm -hmm. doing quick writes. What did we call this? We call this quick writes using mentor texts. Just as a quick reminder, Sharon, um, mm. how long should a quick write go for? Ah, well, good question. It can vary. Mm -hmm. To begin with, a quick write, if we do a quick write, when we write uninterrupted for just two minutes and we really, it's about, you know, we can't be sitting there thinking, if we're truly doing a, a quick write, two minutes can be a great place to start. And they've got, and that's quite a long time. And they have to keep writing. Yeah, um, yeah. That, even if they haven't thought of something. Yeah, even yep. if I can't think, because as soon as we, <laughs> as soon as we get into our head, we can't think of what to do. We're done. <laughs> mm. You know, it's really hard to get ourselves back from there, mm -hmm. which is why we keep the quick writes quite short for a start, so that we haven't got students sitting there for a long time stuck mm. because we all know <laughs> we all know how long some of our students sit there in a lesson stuck so what the quick ride is really doing is building the stamina for just getting into the writing and and maintaining the writing so Two minutes is a good place to start. I've started with one minute. We soon get to a point where we get up to, they go, oh, it's not long enough. Can we have three minutes? Mm. And then many of the teachers I know, and I myself did this, is where we pushed quick right into, because if we see this as a tool, a writer's tool, students would often say, Oh, can we can we do a fifteen minute quick write today? 
which meant I wasn't actually necessarily setting the the topic. It was about them having uninterrupted thinking and writing time, not overthinking time, but quiet mm. time to just be writing without without getting themselves stuck. So it really helps to form a bit of a habit, a writing habit. Um, that is one of its other functions and that's what um, a lot of adult writers do. They'll use, um, they might, there's a number of writers that I've heard speaking about their writing habits and they might set themselves a two-hour write, which is don't stop and think just keep writing, I'll come back and I'll do the editing, revising work of that section. If I'm writing a novel, <laughs> I come back to that section and I. some writers say, you know, that's the afternoon work. Some writers will say that's how they start their day, revising what they did the day before so then they can move on to the new day, you know, the new write of the day. So... So, yeah, it varies. It varies. Um, And it really is guided by the... um, by how we're using it as a tool and and students owning it as a tool. Also, I just want to mention that the share... In a day, I really encourage every student to have to share in some way doesn't have to be a long share it might be what what was I trying to do here's a word that I think worked really well and they're sharing in in pairs or whatever yeah or to or to the whole sometimes to the in pairs or to the group Mm -hmm. or but I I definitely get I want to hear and if I'm building this community of writers I I tend to go with the you know, a quick share from after each quick write, I might get six, seven people to do a share so that, you know, I'm covering, you know, a number of people sharing. And I found that sharing um, then really motivates and guides the right, all of the class. Yes. Because they think, oh, I can do that too. And and that's what we want. We want every child here thinking Mm. Mm. that what they've done today is be a writer. And they see themselves as that, even with mm. – that's where I've put in the share here. Have some students share their first quick write. What were they trying to do as a writer? What word, phrase, idea worked well? Mm. You know, it doesn't – they don't have to read the whole piece, mm. although <laughs> invariably it starts getting to that. Can mm. we – I really want to share my whole thing. Mm. Once I'm gathering – oh, actually, before I go on to that, how often would we do this? This isn't an everyday piece. This is a um, – this doesn't have to be – quick writes using mentor texts. That doesn't have to be an everyday piece. The tool of quick write, I can use quick write for other things too. Like quick writes to edit our writing – so if I'm noticing that we're having trouble with um, or even if we're still learning how to edit, go to a quick write piece, go to a short piece that we've done, learn how to edit. So choose one of those. You know, I can do my little demo of how to um, edit. Then I can get them to go to that small piece that they've done and edit that with the with whatever focus I've just demonstrated or I might get them to um, you know if I'm in revision phase if I want to teach them how to do the revising so that they can then take that to their big piece because I want to keep same with the editing edit the short little bit but now go to your big piece that you're working on start editing there the quick write, just doing it with a small piece, lets us 
experiment again. And share. We've covered a lot of ground and I know that was hard without... Um, Showing it. Without you seeing those pieces in front of you. Mm. So if you do have the opportunity for a staff meeting mm. or for, you know, in a team that you work with or just on your own, this podcast might be one that you listen to again and have those pieces in front of you yep. as you're listening because then it will make, make, make a whole lot more sense. More sense. Yeah. And you've got a book or two today, Sharon. I do mm. because I've, you know, book shopping is just a part of my life because not a, that makes it sound like it's something that I just have to be doing. It's not because I have to be. It's just because I can't help myself. <laughs> You're a book shopaholic. <laughs> I am. I am. So I have got a couple of books that I've brought today and I just want to tell you a little bit about the 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 book shopping quest, I suppose, in this instance. And it's linked to today because the two books that I've brought when I'm when I'm book shopping, I look for books for all kinds of reasons. But these two books are examples of I know when I picked both of these up, I was thinking, oh, do you know what? These would make great mentor texts for for younger students. Mm. I've just forgotten to say something about the quick writes using mentor texts. Maybe I did say it, but if I didn't, here I am just saying it again. Yeah, I think I did. I said in that pack, they're really good for, you know, our maybe year twos, you know, through you know, through primary. Maybe there's some there. I think that fourteen thousand things to be happy about could absolutely work for year sevens, eights, maybe nines. So, um, so I sort of hadn't. I didn't feel like I'd put an age thing on it. But anyway, the two books I've brought um, here today are ones, as I said, that when I read them, I thought... So I was reading them with a writer's eye, thinking, ah, what was the writer doing here and what could young writers... So I suppose these really are more examples for the writers that we might not have talked so much about today, and that would be... The first, the five-year-olds and the six-year-olds. So the first book is called I Love You Now and Forever, Dawn Casey. I love you the way the sun rises, this day and every day. I love you the way the old oak grows, sure and strong. I love you the way the leaves dance, with dizzy delight. I love you the way the spring bubbles, flowing and growing. I love you the way the birds fly, sky high and soaring. And on it goes. In fact, our eight, nine, ten-year-olds <laughs> could probably go with that as well, not just our little ones. But I love, I love the way... It isn't just, I love you, blah, it's, but I love you, um, I love you the way the waterfall roars, thunderous and wondrous. Beautiful. Isn't it? Mm. Yeah, so this lovely, and of course there's an ellipsis after, um, I love you the way the waterfall roars, thunderous and wondrous. The second one, another love you book, this one's I love you when, written by Annie Baker. So once again, what's the, the writer doing here? I love you when it's warm and sunny. I love you when you're being funny. I love you when it's wet outside. I love you when you want to hide. I love you when it's very breezy. I even love you when you're sneezy. I love you when you rush to and fro. And I love you... When there's nowhere to go. I love you when you're feeling sleepy. I love you when you're sad and weepy. I love you when you giggle, when you wiggle, when you wriggle. I love you when you're snuggly. I love you when you're huggly. 
I love you when you say, I love you too. But mostly, I love you whenever I'm with you. So, you know, teachers will often say, oh, you know, my children are on the I love mum, I love dad, I love... I think this is a really great shift into I love you when and there's there's the text to create. Pattern text, but what's the writer trying to do here? And right here, this isn't just a list. This has a satisfy has an engaging lead and then has a very satisfying conclusion, a very satisfying ending, which books can help our, when we're looking at mentor texts, can help our readers see and understand that and even try and do that for themselves. Even if they haven't written 17 I love you whens, but to start it and to have a satisfying finish, they've just learned something huge about writing. And something else that intrigued me, Sharon, was that mm. you purchased those books at a discount shop. Yes. Now, they were really affordable. They were two dollars each, actually. And there was a whole bunch of books in there, but um, what intrigued me was that you went through each one and you you had a certain eye for what you were looking for, mm. and there was a whole range of them that you didn't buy, yeah, because you couldn't see them working in your classroom, but these you could. Yeah, yeah, uh, I could see their potential as a mentor text. So even in a you know heavily discounted shop, you know two dollars a book, mm. there are some really quality books that you can find. Yes, with yeah, the, with the right eye. Yeah, and I suppose for those books that I didn't buy, it wasn't because they weren't good books. Okay. And but I was looking for. I know I was looking in particular for books that would be good mentor texts. Right. Mentor text for us looking at them with a writer's eye. Yep. Whereas the others may have... Well, I could still look at them with a writer's eye, but as you can see here, I mean, I've chosen two pattern books Mm. because for young writers, that's such an engaging way for them to be able to get a rhythm and a, um, not that everything has to be a pattern book for them, Mm. but, oh, my word, it engages them as writers and gives them good success at that and for them to try lots of things out with that. But you're right, there were out of the, you know, the 50 different titles Mm. that were there, I think I came away with a dozen Mm, and only uh, only two dollars each. Yes, but mm. do you know what? Probably could have taken the whole lot fifty, but sometimes a limit just has to be made, doesn't mm. it? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> anyway, well done. Um, we'll wrap up there, I think. Thank you. So, thanks to everybody for joining us today. We've loved to see that so many of you have subscribed to our episodes from all corners of the world. The Teacher's Toolkit podcast is all about giving you an insider's guide to top teaching ideas, tools, techniques in literacy, teaching and learning. Please subscribe to our weekly newsletter via the website. You'll receive advance notice on blogs, podcasts, events and ways to contact us. Thank you, Phil. Pleasure. And all the best to you, our listeners. See you next time. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks for listening to the podcast. To make sure you don't miss any literacy learning tips and insights, please subscribe to our show on your favourite podcast player. At Q Learning, our literacy specialists draw on over 30 years of teaching and international consulting experience to deliver world-class learning solutions. We equip, empower and support teachers to become their authentic selves. To find out about upcoming webinars and about how Q can help you and your school, visit qlearning.com.au. And you can get even more amazing teaching resources right now at teachific.com.au.
stay tuned.